What you guys got another video here for you on how to boot multiple ISOs from your hard drive with no USB required. Now on this system, I've got two drives on here, but you could do it with one drive. If you partition out your C drive and have a bit of spare space, you could create a multi-boot ISO partition there. But I have got one separate drive right here. My data E drive is where I'm going to store all my ISO files. Also, I want to make sure that you understand that this system I'm using right here is a legacy setup. It is an MBR uh, partition scheme. If you want to see a GPT version of this, then let me know in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to make that video for you. But as it stands right here, you can see we're using MBR for our partition scheme on this setup. So let's get started. Before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD key sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows 11 Pro or cheap office keys, then check out CD key sales. I've got the links in the video description for you. Click on the buy now button once you've uh, selected your product you want to purchase and use my promo code to get 30% discount. That is capital B, capital R09, and apply that to order and get a 30% discount on all of your purchases on CD key sales. They do a variety of other products that they're selling on their website, so you can check all that out. You will need to create an account to purchase your products, but once you've got your key, head over to the activation center, click change, paste in your key, click next, and click activate to activate your version of Windows. So back to the uh, tutorial, what we're going to do is download this uh, Grub uh, FM right here in the US uh, format, English US. Also, you're going to need EasyBCD. Uh, for this uh, particular tutorial uh, you can see here non-commercial is what you'll need to do register that and basically download the software if you're a home user next what we're going to do is open up our system and we're going to go into that download section and we're going to extract the grub fm dash e n underscore us file this is our menu system we're going to be using so extract this and we're going to extract this to our location which is our E drive in this case. So go down and find your drive uh, where you want to store it. So this is the drive we're going to be using. I've already got a folder in there called Grub. So I'm going to extract to that folder and click OK. And now we need to install EasyBCD. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Click Next to install the software. And again, this is 100% free for home use. Click Next here and run EasyBCD, like so. Click OK to choose your language and click OK again. So it should look something like this. We'll take a look at that in a second. Let's head over to our Drive E here because what I want to do is show you what we have here. I've got a couple of ISO files here. Just going to extract the internal folder that was there. I didn't realize there was a folder in there and put it in its own folder and then delete the Grub folder because I don't need two folders uh, so I can just remove one of those. Sorry for that a little bit of complication there. But there you go. Inside that uh, folder there, we do have our ISO file right here, which is what we're going to use for our Grub menu. From here, what we're going to do next is go back to EasyBCD, and we're going to configure this so we can boot to this menu system. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got a couple of ISOs in here, Iron's Boot CD and Linux Mint, which I'll show you how to use this in a second. So from here, you can see our menu, which is Windows 11. And what we're going to do is go to add a new entry. From here, we're going to go down to ISO and we're going to click on the name. So you can give it a whatever name you like. I'm going to call it, say, multi-boot because that's what we're going to be doing here. Multi-booting ISO files. You can choose whatever name you like. Now we need to choose a path. So let's go ahead and click on the path icon. And we're going to go ahead and choose uh, this PC and go to our E drive and choose the Grub ISO file that we just downloaded and extracted. Click open, and now we can choose mode. We don't want to boot from our uh, disk, we want to call this load from memory. And then click the plus sign right here to make this uh, setting set. And you can see here the boot menu has been successfully added. Now we can go to edit our boot menu and you should see the new menu that we just added called multi-boot. You can make this your main boot if you want to, but I'm going to leave it exactly like this because that's how I want to boot up. And we'll get that option once we uh, reboot the system. Once we reboot, we should get to the Metro menu where we can choose uh, what we want to boot to. And we're going to choose to boot to our multi-boot 
uh, partition here. So we're going to reboot the system. And now we've got our menu, choose an operating system. We're going to choose multi-boot. And once we uh, boot into multi-boot here, you should now see a menu change like this. And this is what we've got here. This is our little grub menu. And from here, what we're going to do is select our E drive, which is our data drive. Yours might be called whatever you've got your drive called, but it's the one down on the bottom called data. And it's uh, our drive that we're going to be using. So we're going to come down, hard drive one, click enter on the keyboard, and this will take us to the next menu. From here, we can choose what ISO we want to boot to. For instance, let's try booting to Hiram's Boot CD first. So I'm going to push enter again. This will load up the screen. From here, we're going to go down and choose boot ISO uh, map in brackets. But there's a few options in here. But we're, this is the one we're going to choose for this boot. It should load up like this. And from here, once it's fully loaded, you should have booted straight into Iron's Boot CD if you're playing along at home on your system. You can do this on a virtual machine if you want to practice as well. If you don't want to touch your main system, you can do all this on a virtual environment, which is what I'm doing right here as to not to mess up my main system. So from here, we're now booted into Hiram's Boot CD and you can use it just like you would with any other uh, system. You could basically reset passwords and do all of that good stuff from inside Hiram's Boot CD. But what if we wanted to uh, reinstall Windows or reinstall uh, Linux onto the main drive? Well, you can do by using this method as well. You don't need a USB flash drive to do it with this setup. So let's go ahead and reboot. And what we're going to do is choose multi-boot here again. Go back into our Grub menu system right here. From here, we're going to go back down to our data drive, our E drive. Whatever you've called your drive will be listed right there. So press enter on that so we can gain access and get access to the ISO files. This time, we're going to choose Linux Mint. We're going to install Linux Mint onto this system. Now, you can either dual boot it or you can choose to boot to uh, Linux Mint on its own and overwrite Windows. So we're going to boot Ubuntu from ISO. That's what's listed right here. So press enter. And I know it's Linux Mint, but it will say boot to Ubuntu. Now we're going to Ubuntu Live, click enter here. And now it will start loading up. So what we're going to get to is the desktop where we can then choose to install Linux Mint. So let's go ahead and click on install Linux Mint here. Now, remember, if you do this, you are going to be overwriting your Windows uh, drive unless you are dual booting. So we're going to choose our language. So let's go ahead and do that right here. I'm going to click English UK and click continue. And from here, you can then go ahead and move on to the next step, which is install media codecs. And we can also choose how we want to install Linux Mint, whether we want to overwrite our Windows drive or whether you want to dual boot. I'm going to erase the disk and install Linux Mint onto that drive and completely erase uh, the Windows installation on here. Bear in mind, make sure you don't install onto the data drive that you've got the ISO files on, otherwise you're just going to mess up your system. That's really important. You need that because that's what we're loading up from from here. So choose your partition. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one right here, and we can then move on with the installation. Now, of course, you've seen Linux Mint installed multiple times on many different channels, even on my channel. So I'm just going to quickly set this up, and then we'll skip through and get to the main meat and potatoes of the video, where you can see Linux Mint has now been installed onto the system and overwritten Windows 11, which will probably please a lot of Linux users out there to say that Windows has now been uh, kicked to the curb. We're going to load up our grub screen here, boot to Linux Mint, sign in. This is what we set up earlier on and get to the desktop of Linux Mint. There we go. All up and running and you should see it looking something like this. Now, if I go into the drives here, you can see we've got our data drive here and that is now on the desktop as well. So I can access all the ISO files inside there. Pretty cool little trick if you ask me. If you want to see the GPT version, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll do that video for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. 
Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.